All right, I have my next Kiwi Co Crate right here. Uh, I ordered this one. I didn't, this is not part of my monthly subscription, but I wanted one that actually looked interesting and that I would actually use and that I didn't know anything about. So I don't know anything about making a soap dispenser. And I find out when it got here that not only is it a soap dispenser, it is a battery powered soap dispenser. So this is what comes inside. Have a much thicker uh, booklet. There's the battery instructions, bunch of stuff. The soap, unfortunately, apparently leaked a bit. So that's a bummer, but it doesn't look like it's affected anything because everything is in plastic. So that's good. So what I'm going to do, I was hoping to live stream putting this together, but uh, apparently you don't just decide on a whim to do that. So I'm going to edit various pieces together. I'll film after I've finished each step of the, or step of putting it together, or I guess I should say each part of putting it together, show what it looks like, and then edit it all together at the end. Let me give you a little overview of the booklet. It's got the what's in this booklet, instructions. I like that this one includes a full sheet of all the different parts. That's pretty cool. I can actually check this time, see if anything's missing before I get started. Um, some information about the history of hygiene. And then we get into the actual building. So you have part A, part B, part C, oh yeah, part D, make the pump. Oh, there's even a part E, wire it up. A little concerned about that for myself. I have never worked with any kind of wiring or anything like that. So that should be interesting. How to use the soap dispenser. Oops, skipped a page there. Oh, troubleshooting, that's kind of cool. Behind the design, which that part's pretty interesting. So like here you've got fluids tested, put prototypes, motor gear ratio, and hand washes during development. Peristalsis. Mass market liquid hand soap. And some hygiene hacks. So I think this will be interesting. I'll be back after I've figured out if I have all the parts. Good news. I have all the parts this time. So I've got my parts all separated out there. I went through and checked off each item because I wanted to make sure that everything was there. And the rest of them are up here. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess on here right now. It's going to be a bit of a mess. But uh, let's get started. Okay, here's the base. Um, that wasn't too bad. It was a little weird trying to force the uh, foam bits through these holes. You can see that the hole isn't all that big. And it literally says uh, squish and push, which is really fun. So squish foam and slide forward. So I guess it's really just to make it hold tighter, but that was eh, about the only trickiest part. Quick and easy. Part A. Done. Check. Okay, so part B is done. This is with the nozzle. And it's got a little switch in there. That's what the wires are coming from. And honestly, this is fun because I love the sound this makes. Very satisfying. So if that's what I'm going to get every time I dispense soap, that's going to be great. So part B, check, on to part C. All right, so part C of the instructions is complete. It's looking more like an actual soap dispenser now. This lid is really cute. I like how it was put together. It's this piece and this piece are crisscrossed and they fit into this blue piece 
and then this foam ring it goes around to hold them in place and so it says it doesn't seal so you have to keep it upright but honestly to me it seems like it would seal and i'm not going to test it obviously i don't want to have a big old spill but it's really cool that it mostly seals so i've got all of the I guess all of the non-electronic parts done. The next step is to make the pump, I'm sorry, the next part. So this is where I'm gonna be getting into hopefully more than just putting together an Ikea style puzzle. We'll see. Because so far, all of this has been very much like following Ikea instructions. Again, just like when I made the um, lockbox. But this time the screwdriver is a little bit bigger, a little bit longer. So it's actually usable. The little mini screwdriver that they gave me with the other kit was impossible to use. I ended up just using one from home. So part C, check. On to part D. Oh, okay, here we are with part D. Part D, complete. Uh, this year was kind of a pain in the butt because Every time I plunked it in and started turning it the way the instructions said to do, it fed the tube out too far and this got all wobbly. So I had to be really careful with that. Um, it's definitely a little on the interesting side. But again, we're still not really doing much more than following IKEA instructions. However, um, there wasn't actually any wiring up to do. It was just connecting the rotor to the motor. So maybe in this next step, but uh, we'll see. It's fun, it's interesting. It feels fairly sturdy considering that I'm putting pieces together. Um, the construction is nice. The material is like some weird mix between plastic and uh, cardboard. I don't know, I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but um, it's still got a great click. But yeah, so part D, check, on to part E. All right, here we go. I'm done building it. So it really was IKEA instructions all the way through. Again, um, it's a little disappointing, but there's something cool about having built something that actually uses electronics and moves. I do intend to read the extra information that came in the booklet, so like uh, about history of hygiene, um, science, basically this section here, and this other red thing here, just because I want to see what I might learn from it. Those were sections that just didn't really... I, there wasn't anything new really for me to learn from the mechanical lockbox one but this is something i know virtually nothing about maybe a little bit about the history of hygiene but the rest of it not much so i'm going to fill this up and then the next last bit of video will be me using it because i want to see if it works or if it drips because apparently that is one of the things that can happen uh, that is in the troubleshooting troubleshooting here uh, the rotor, let's see, did that, if the nozzle gets clogged, where's the dripping issue? Oh yeah, if the dispenser is dripping. So, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got it filled, and uh, I don't think this is where it's going to live because it doesn't actually fit on the ledge. There's quite a bit left past the edge of the ledge there. But let's see how long it takes to actually give me soap. <laughs> There's soap! <laughs> and I suppose I shouldn't be all that surprised by it because that was the point, but that's it's kind of cool. And it's this is the soap they sent. Let's see. Eh, not bad. A little bit of suds. But hey, what do you know? It works. So, you know, it's definitely, again, geared more towards kids, kind of like the mechanical lockbox, which makes sense. I think this is supposed to be 14 and up, maybe 12 and up. So it makes sense they're going to make it easier for kids. Um, 
I do wish that they had listed that somewhere, that this is really more for kids and adults probably won't get much out of it, but it really is marketed as everyone. I think it's 12 and up, 12 or 14 and up. So it makes it seem like there's going to be something a little bit more involved or interesting. But this was fun. You know, it took up about an hour and a half, same as the mechanical lockbox. So, you know, if you think it's a good use of your money, go for it. If you don't, well, I'll probably do the same thing as this, or maybe I'll even live stream the next one that I get. Uh, that's it for now. Use some, a nice look at my soap dispenser.